bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. My name is Minister Red. I am the pastor here at Christ Our Life Ministries, located in Augusta, Georgia, on 308 Rose Street, directly behind the Walmart Lowe's on Bobby Jones Expressway, Interstate 520, heading west. I want to thank you for joining me and my members, amen, Brother Roland and Sister Brittany Peachy, Sister Beverly and Brother Harry Evans, Sister Selena and her beautiful husband, Stan. We are Christ Our Life Ministries, and we want to thank you for joining us today, amen. For another beautiful worship service, amen, to hear what the Lord has to say in the name of Jesus. One also thank you for joining my sister church, amen, Spirit of Liberty's Ministries, pastor by the phenomenal minister Kenya King and his beautiful wife, Sister Donna King, amen, Pastor King, you talked beautifully this morning on the law and on, amen, Abraham's faith, amen, you talked beautifully this morning, my friend, amen, want to thank you for joining Spirit of Liberty's Ministries, every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m., amen. If you want to be blessed, if you want to hear a word from the Lord, then you are to join them. Hallelujah. This ain't the season to be playing around with your soul, your soul salvation. It's time for you to hear preach the word of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I am on YouTube. I am on YouTube, amen. There are over 200 messages posted on YouTube under my name, amen, Roderick Red. You just type in Roderick Red, hit the search button. I will come up in a white shirt. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Today's word. Today's word, amen. The seed. We want to talk about the seed today. Hallelujah. Jesus says in Luke 8 and 11, he says, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Let us, amen. I want to go into a amen, a praise. I want to play a song, amen. Hallelujah. Give the people time to... Join the telecast. Hallelujah. I just felt in my spirit to play a song today. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We're all gathered here. We're all gathered here. In your presence, Lord. Yes, Lord. With our arms open wide. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, with uplifted hands and with open hearts, we welcome you. We welcome you to abide. Oh, Lord, we need your spirit. We need your spirit, your Holy Spirit, right now. Hallelujah. Come on now. Give us, your, give us your spirit. Your Holy Spirit. Give it to us, Lord. Right now. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We can do nothing. Till you come, dear Lord. Hold on to that. We are so unworthy to even call on your name. So please, thank you. Please, Lord, hear our prayer. Don't let our coming be in vain. Hallelujah. We need the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, right now. Give us your Spirit. Give us your Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Give us your Holy Spirit. Right now. Fall fresh. 
fall fresh. Fall fresh. Hallelujah. me, Lord. Lord, press on me. Lord, press on me. Oh, Lord, when I get old in you, hallelujah, decayable, fall press on me. Thank you, Lord. right here. Here we go right here. Let's say a prayer. another word in me. I don't know if I want to wait till next uh, until Thursday night to bring it up. I want to bring it tomorrow night. Amen. The word is burning in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Today's word. Today's word. The seed. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The word of God is a seed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we want to thank you for another day in the, land, in the land of the living. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die for us on the cross. Thank you for another opportunity to come before your presence and to hear your word. Hallelujah. A word that is a seed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh God, we ain't nothing without you, but we everything with you. Hallelujah. It might be my voice that they recognize, and it might be my face that they know. Hallelujah. But let the words of my mouth 
hallelujah, be a reproduction of the seeds that were sown into my heart. Hallelujah. May this word not fall on deaf ears and may it find good soil to find residence in. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we love you today. Thank you for the word in advance. Thank you for giving us another opportunity to draw nigh unto you so that you can draw nigh unto us before our appointment with death takes us out of this world and into your presence. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. The word of God. The word of God. The seed is the word of God. If you plant, if you plant a rock, if you plant a rock, if you plant a rock, I got some rock. If you plant a rock in the ground, no matter how long that rock stays in the ground, you're never going to get anything to develop out of this rock. Did you know that the Ten Commandments were engraven on rocks? Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. He was the Word made flesh. He is the seed of God. Hallelujah. No matter how much you plant the Ten Commandments into your heart, no matter how much you plant in the name of Jesus, the law into your heart, hallelujah, you will not get any fruitfulness out of it. Hallelujah. God did not give the commandments. God did not give the law for man to live by. He gave it to show man that he could not live by it because the law was weak in the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh condemned sin in the flesh. Sin causes corruption. Hallelujah. The law couldn't even stop the corruption. The Ten Commandments couldn't stop the corruption. Only the seed of God can stop the corruption. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. John 10 and 10. The Bible says in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Where is life found? Where is life found? Life is found in seeds. Life is found in a seed. Hallelujah. Every plant that, was, that you ever going to see, it came from a seed. Everything that was ever created came out of a seed. Even we came out of a seed. Genesis 3 and 15, the Lord told the serpent after it had deceived Adam and Eve and caused them to eat from the forbidden tree, the Lord said, I will put enmity between you and the woman. I'm going to put enmity between your seed and her seed. Her seed is going to bruise your head, but you shall bruise his heel. Hallelujah. Where is life found? Life is found in a seed. Hallelujah. So we got the seed versus the seed. 
Genesis 2 and 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Oh, come on now. Hallelujah. Every tree was pleasant to the sight and it was good for food. I need you to hold on to that for me. I'm going to mention it again on down into the message. Just remember, I'm going to say it again in case if you're taking notes and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Hallelujah. You can't get a tree without having a plant and you can't get a plant without having a seed in the name of Jesus. It's all about the tree's seed. It's all about the tree's seed. Hallelujah. The Lord is talking about a bunch of trees here. Hallelujah. And he distinguished two specific trees. And then he began to talk about, hallelujah, the problem with the seed on the trees. And he told Adam of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In the day that you take of the seed of that tree, you're going to surely die. Adam chose the seed of the knowledge of good and evil rather than the seed of the tree of life. What did I tell you about the seed? Where is life found? Life is found in a seed. Adam and Eve chose the seed of knowledge, but knowledge is not life, but knowledge is in life. Oh, y'all gonna get used to me saying that. It's one of my favorite quotes. Knowledge is not life, but knowledge is in life. Hallelujah. So Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And hallelujah, one day Jesus was coming through Bethsaida and he ran into a blind man that some people had brought to him. In Mark 8, chapter 22 and 25, it says, And Jesus cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring him a blind man and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw anything. And the blind man looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. I'm here to tell you, God through the eyes of God, through the spiritual eyes of God, and it should be through the spiritual eyes of of God's children, amen, that we should see men as trees walking. We shouldn't see them as white men. We shouldn't see them as black men. We shouldn't see them as Mexicans. We shouldn't see them as Arabians. We shouldn't see them as Russians. We shouldn't see them as Ukrainians. We should see them as trees walking. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the spiritual realm, the word of God gives us the ability to see men as trees walking. Hallelujah. So the question is, is what is a seed? What is a seed? Since life is found in a seed. Hallelujah. Life is found in the seed of the woman. Hallelujah. What is a seed? A seed is a plant's unit of reproduction. Notice it says it's a plant's unit, not a tree, because the, because the plant has to turn into a tree. The seed turns into a plant that turns into a tree. So a seed is a plant's reproduction capable. Hear me now. The seed is a plant's 
reproduction capable of developing into another such plant. Come on now. What is the definition of the word such? The same class. A seed is a plant's unit of reproduction. It means it is a plant's offspring capable of developing into another same class plant. What is the definition of the word capable? Having the abilities that are needed to do or to accomplish something. And the thing that makes it capable is the soil. Oh, y'all gonna hear me today. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that out of the ground, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. Well, in Genesis chapter 2 and 7, the Bible says, Hallelujah, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. What am I trying to tell you here? I'm trying to tell you, don't get in front of Genesis 2 and 7. Hallelujah. In Genesis 2 and 7, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So when the Lord God formed man, he had not yet uh, caused no tree to grow in the Garden of Eden. Y'all gonna hear me today. Hallelujah. Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. And then in Genesis 2 and 9, the Lord out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Hallelujah. Not good for giving off leaves. Oh, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. The tree was good for food. Not good for having a bunch of leaves on it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the thing that makes it capable... The thing that makes a plant capable of being able to turn into a tree is the soil. How do we know that? Out of the ground, out of the soil, made the Lord God to. See, 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 if, if the soil is good and the seed is sown in the good soil, hallelujah, then the Lord God can make a tree grow, a, a tree that is pleasant to the sight, a, a tree that's good for food. I'm talking about good trees. I'm talking about, I want to know why you walking around talking about you are a child of God, but you ain't capable of speaking yourself into a healed body in the name of Jesus. Out of the ground, hallelujah, out of your ground, God can make you healed again. All you got to do is get the proper seed on the inside of the soil. Hallelujah, because the word of God is a seed and it is capable of accomplishing whatever it needs to accomplish. God said, my word will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that what I sent it to do. He sent his word and he healed them of all their infirmities. In the name of Jesus, I want to know why you ain't healed today. The problem is, it's something wrong with your soil because the word of God is capable. The Bible, the definition of a seed is a plant unit of reproduction capable of developing into another such plant. God will develop you into the same type of plant that he developed. Hallelujah. The woman with the 12 year issue of blood with. Hallelujah. He will develop you into a person that can see that used to not be able to see. He can develop you into a healed vessel that you used to be. Hallelujah capable what type of soil are you 
that the word of God is not capable of making you who you are. The Bible says, is it anything too hard for God? Hallelujah. Jesus said, all you need is a mustard seed of faith. A mustard seed. All you need is a mustard seed of the word of God. Hallelujah. Just a mustard seed will make you capable of saying unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and it shall be done unto you. Hallelujah. The word of God was capable enough to allow Peter to walk on the water. But it was when the soil began to doubt the seed that was planted into its ear gates that Peter began to sink. Hallelujah. The problem is with the soil. It is not with the word of God. There are countless numbers of people walking around. Hallelujah. The blind man said, I see men walking as trees in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You're going to, trees don't walk. Hallelujah. Trees are rooted and grounded into the ground from whence they was planted in the name of Jesus. Trees don't walk around and if we don't walk, we walk by faith. We don't walk by the root system. Hallelujah. We rooted and grounded in faith. Hallelujah. Rooted and grounded in faith. We walk by faith. Hallelujah. If Peter would have just stayed rooted and grounded in the faith that enabled him to be capable enough to walk sometime at some point towards Jesus on the water before the soil began to doubt the word of God that he heard. Hallelujah. There are countless numbers of people walking around professing to be born again believers but are living a corruptible life because of the soil. It's all because of the soil. Because 1 Peter 2 and 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23 says, being born again. That's what I said. You got countless numbers of people walking around professing to be born again believers, but living a corruptible life because of the soil. Because 1 Peter 1 and 23 says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, not of the seed of the serpent, but of the seed of the woman, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. If the word of God is incorruptible and a professing believer is living a corruptible life, the problem is the soil. Ain't nothing wrong with the word of God. If the word of God does not come true in your life, it ain't got nothing to do with the word of God. It got to do with the soil. It's got to do with the soil. Hallelujah. Here we go right there. Watch this. Exodus 32, 1 through 7. It says, and when the people saw that Moses was delayed to come down from the mountain. So you got to wait for the word of God. You got to wait for the seed to turn into a plant. Hallelujah. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. Although uh, them children of Israel had saw everything that Moses had done to get them out of Egypt, uh, how the Red Sea was open, how God called water out of the rock, uh, how God dropped manna down because the word of God, uh, the incorruptible seed uh, is incorruptible. Is it anything too hard uh, for the word of God uh, when the people saw? See, the problem is uh, you're looking too much. And when you look, uh, hallelujah, you're going to start doubting. That's why 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, we walk by faith, not by sight. But it was when the people saw that Moses delayed. So what if the seed is delaying? So what if the seed is taking its time? 
Hallelujah. Wait on the Lord and he shall renew your strength. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down off the mountain, the people gathered themselves together under Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. And for this Moses, uh, for this Pastor Red guy, how this man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that keep talking this Christ life stuff, we want not what has become of him. I can tell you this. Uh, I'm going to be here every Thursday, and I'm going to be here every Sunday. You want to know where I'm at? Uh, tune in every Thursday and every Sunday, and you'll find me. Hallelujah. As for this man Moses, uh, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, uh, we want not what become of him. Stop looking at men. Stop looking at Pastor Red. Uh, the seed of God uh, should be in you already. Whether Pastor Red is here on Thursday or Sunday or not. If I'm not here Thursday, and if I'm not here on Sunday, hallelujah, you got the seed in you already. You don't need no pastor red. Hallelujah. And Aaron said unto the people, here we go, Aaron finna start a, a prosperity ministry with the people. What's this prosperity ministry? Aaron said, uh, break off the golden earrings uh, which are in the ears uh, of your wives, uh, of your sons, uh, of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Uh, that's prosperity ministry. That's what that is. That's why y'all broke the day. That's why you ain't got no money, because you got some pastor, hallelujah, that ain't sowing you the word of God. He's too busy. Taking your possessions to offer to a God that ain't your God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Feel free to get off my Facebook page anytime you're ready. Find you another pastor. I ain't thinking about you. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Tell them to break them off and bring them unto me. And all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with the graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. Hallelujah. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. You better listen to my message about are there any ashes around. Aaron built an altar and Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. How can you call a feast to the Lord when you're building a golden calf for another Lord. You ain't making no feast to the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And they rose up early in the morning. And offered burnt offerings. And brought peace offerings. Hallelujah. I know my sister Jack is listening to this. You see that it says. And they offered burnt offerings. And brought peace offerings. This is where you got to know the word of God. We in Exodus here. God hadn't even started the Levitical priesthood yet. What did they know about burnt offerings? And what did they know about the peace offerings with God? See, they were trying to make peace with a golden molten calf. In the name of Jesus, we serve an invisible God. In the name of Jesus... They offered burnt offerings, but I bet you it wasn't no ashes at the end of the altar, hallelujah, because they was burning gold that they had took off their ears and brought to Aaron in the name of Jesus. They offered burnt offerings and brought pieces and burnt and, and peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and to drink. 
and rose up to play the same thing that was going on in the days of Noah. The people in the days of Noah, they rose up to eat and to drink and to play until the day that Noah went into the ark. Hallelujah. And the Lord said unto Moses, Moses, go get thee down for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. The, the, the dirt, the ground, the earth, with the breath of life in his nostrils, is corrupt dirt. If the word of God is incorruptible and a professing believer is living a corruptible life, the problem is the soil. The problem in the world today has nothing to do with the word of God, the seed, but man's heart. Jesus tells us the parable of the four types of hearts, the four types of soils that the incorruptible word of God is sown into. You got the wayside heart, you got the rocky heart, you got the thorny heart, and you got the good heart. And I know you professing believers, I know if you spend any time in the word of God, then I know that you've quoted Psalms 119 and 11 before. Thy word, thy seed, thy capable word that will develop me into such a plant as you. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may develop into such a plant as Christ. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you, that I might not live by the serpent's seed, that I do not develop into such a plant as Adam and Eve developed into. The word of God is capable of bringing any man through life's trials. Why? Because there is life in the seed that lives and abides forever. Being born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The word of God is capable. The word of God is, has the ability, gives us the abilities that are needed to do or to accomplish something. Hallelujah. You don't need nothing but the word of God. But the word of God needs good soil in order to produce a harvest. The wayside soil. Jesus says in Mark 4 and 15, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown, where the seed is sown, and when they hear it, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts because they got a hard heart. They hard hearted. Hallelujah. I know people today, hard, they, they, they say, I tell you, I'm going back to it. I'm going back to it. There are countless numbers of people walking around professing to be born-again believers, 
but are living a corruptible life because of the soil. I'm telling you, the way's hard-hearted, got a very hard heart. Hard-hearted towards the people they used to be married to. You can't get them to say a nice word about their ex. Hard-hearted about some friends they used to have. Can't get them to say a kind word about their friend. About their friend. That's what I'm trying to tell you today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't hate me. You, your thoughts hate me. If you're a person that was married to somebody and you just can't stand that person, then the word of God has not made its way into your wayside heart. I mean, the, I mean your heart's like this rock. I mean, no matter how much you just can't get the seed on the inside, don't matter. You with your hard hearted self. Don't worry about that. That's why, that's why you're going to live a miserable life on planet Earth. Because the Word of God ain't never going to be able to be sown in there. And if the Word of God ain't sown in there, you ain't going to be capable of doing that. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Except you abide in me and I abide in you. You can do nothing. You ain't bearing no fruit. Hallelujah. The second soil he did dress was the rocky soil. And these are they which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves. See, 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 the seed has got to start rooting. What causes the seed to root is water. See, water baptism should have caused your belief to begin to root. But because you still got such a stony heart, that only enjoys gladness for a while, and so it endures, but for a time afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Because you you know, you don't you don't you know you you, you don't wanna you don't wanna not you though. You 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 the word is in you. It's, but it's in stony ground because you got too many stones. You got you got you got the Black Lives Matter stone. You got the Masonic stone. You got the Eastern Star stone. You got the Alpha Kappa Alpha stone. You got the Omega Psi Phi stone. You got the Make America Great Again stone. You got the Lesbian Homosexual stone. You got the rich person stone. You got the gang member stone. You got the respect the person stone. You got all these stones in there. And because of all them stones, you have no root in yourself. And you'll never be rooted and grounded in Christ because you got too many stones blocking the word from taking root on the inside of you. And because you got too many stones stopping the word of God from taking root on the inside of you, you're never going to be capable of doing nothing. Then you got the thorny stone. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in. Choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. Hallelujah. The word made it in. The word got rooted. But then something started choking it. And you know what's choking it. You want me to tell you how to know the word in you is being choking? You ain't capable of doing nothing. You ain't capable of telling people no. 
You ain't capable of telling people the truth. You ain't capable of laying down your life for Jesus. Peter wasn't capable. Peter thought he was capable. Jesus told Peter, you're going to deny me three times, my friend. You ain't capable enough yet. I ain't gave you the Holy Ghost yet. You ain't capable. See, Peter thought he was capable, not knowing that he was still walking in the seed of the serpent, in the seed of the woman was talking to him. And when he got into the high priest court, the cares of this world and the lust of other things choked out his love for the Lord. And he denied him three times, just like y'all do. The fourth one, which is what I hope you are. And these are they which are sown on good ground. Such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. Some 34, some 60, and some 100. As Jesus was telling this story, take note that three of the soils never brought forth fruit. Which one are you? Oh, but you, because you know which one you are. You know exactly which one you are. I promise you, if a seed is sown in good soil, it will bring forth fruit. Why? Because life is in the seed and through faith, God's seed enters into us. What type of soil are you? Isaiah 65 and 23 says, they shall not labor in vain. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. What type of seed of soil are you? I hope you don't think that you are a soil that is laboring in vain when the seed gets into you so that you can cause, so that seed can grow in you. Your labor is not in vain. Your labor is not in vain. What type of soil are you? The parable of the fruitless fig tree. The parable of the fruitless fig tree. The most common reason for a fig tree not producing fruit is simply its age. There is no tree in the Bible that identifies us with the fig tree, with, with, with the word of God than the fig tree. The first thing that Adam and Eve did when they ate from the wrong tree was put themselves, clothe themselves in fig leaves. The most common reason for a fig tree not producing fruit is simply its age. Trees like animals need to reach a certain maturity before they can produce offspring. Fruit is how a fig tree creates seeds. If the fig tree is not old enough to produce seeds, it will also not produce fruit. Typically, a fig tree will not fruit until it reaches two years old. Oh, I know you've been serving the Lord more than two years. But it can take trees as long as six years to reach the right maturity. There is nothing you can do to speed up the rate of a tree, of a tree that a, of a, the rate a tree matures at. 
There is nothing you can do to speed up the rate of tree maturity. That's why we got to wait on the Lord so that he can renew our strength. We got to wait on the Lord until the plant becomes a tree. Time and patience are the only fixes for a tree, for a plant to mature into a tree. In the parable of the fruitless fig tree, a seed, hear me now, watch this, a seed has become a tree. A tree that did not develop into a tree of the fruit that it came from. Come on, now I'm going to say that again because I know that went over somebody's head. I got to so about to slow this down to make sure we get this. The parable of the fruitless fig tree A seed was planted into the soil. Had to be good soil because a plant grew up and then the soil was so good that the seed that became a plant finally became a full grown tree. But the seed that had become a tree, but it did not become a tree, but that tree did not develop into the same, into the such, the same class of tree that the fruit came from. So this, so this fig tree came out of the seed of a fruit, went into the soil, grew up as a plant, turned into a tree, but it, but it, but it did not produce, it did not produce it did not develop into the tree of the fruit that it came from. Have you developed into the vine? Have you developed into the branch from the vine that you came from? Because Jesus says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. In the parable of the fruitless fig tree, the seed fell into good soil, but something happened after it grew into a tree, it stopped producing fruit. Jesus says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. It's not known by its leaves. It's only known by its fruit. Why? Because the seed and the soil was good. You can't get a good plant if you don't plant a good seed. And you can't get a good plant if the if the seed ain't planted in good soil. Remember, as Jesus was telling this story, take note that three of the soils never brought forth fruit. So if this tree turned into a, a so if this seed turned into a plant that turned into a tree, then it should have been bringing forth fruit. Because the seed and the soil that it was planted in was good. Mark chapter 11, verse 12 through 15 and 9 through 22. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, Jesus was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves. He came in public, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. The purpose of a seed, look, look, the purpose, the seed, a, a plant's unit of production capable of developing into another such plant, the, a such, there's no way, there's no way this, this fig tree could get to the fig tree become a fig tree without it becoming from a seed of another fig tree that produced figs. Jesus 
came to it and he found nothing but leaves for the time of figs was not yet. Mm -mm, don't want it. To, you, you, know, you know why this fig tree should have had figs on it even though the time of figs was not yet? Because the seed that it came from was capable. Watch this. Preach the word. 2 Timothy 4 and 2. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Hallelujah. For the time of figs was not yet. Don't want to hear. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Report, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Another verse says, be ready to spread the word whether or not the time is right. Point out errors. Warn people and encourage them. No matter the season, the seed that grew you makes you capable. Jesus, when he came to it, found nothing but leaves for the time of figs was not yet. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you know, it, it wasn't time for Peter and them to catch no fish, but when Jesus said, cast the net on the other side, Hallelujah. The fish was, the net was full of fish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There wasn't no time to be running out of wine at the wedding. But Jesus turned the water in the wine. Hallelujah. It wasn't, it, it, the, the time had passed for the people to leave to go get something to eat. So Jesus turned two fish and five loaves of bread into enough food to feed 5,000 men, not counting women and children. For the time of figs was not yet. Don't want to hear it. The word of God in you makes you capable in season and out of season. And Jesus answered and said unto the fig tree, no man eat fruit of the hereafter forever because you ain't sowing the corrupt, the, the uncorruptible word of God into their life. That's why Jesus shutting ministries down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus answered and said unto it, no man eat fruit of the hereafter forever because you are not producing the same way that the tree was that produced you. Now I had a my wife is from Turkey. Them some them some fig eating people. Them they like them, them, them some fig eaters. They they eat up some figs. I remember the first time I went I'm, I love fig newtons. I'm a I'm a fig newton eater. So I remember the first time I went to Turkey, I never saw a fig tree. I went to Turkey with Deli. So I get in Deli's grandmama's house and then uh so then d -Lab, the big fig, big old fig tree out in the front yard. And d -Lab said, oh, oh, there goes the figs. d -Lab ran out there to get the figs. She bring the, she's like, oh, honey, you want some figs? I said, I don't eat them nasty things. I don't eat no nasty figs. So then, you know, I love fig newtons. So my wife goes and she gets in my bag where I had a box of fig newtons in. And then she said, what do you think this is? I mean, I felt like an idiot. I'm sitting up here eating figs the whole time. I'm thinking fig news was a cake. I didn't know it was a fruit. Just goes to show you how stupid I was. I was like, oh, uh, but you know what? I still didn't eat none, though. But I eat them fig newtons up. Hallelujah. Jesus said, let no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast them out that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the table of the many changes and the seats of them that sold doves. And when evening was come, he went out of the city, and in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remember said unto him, Master, Behold, the fig tree which thou curses is withered away. And Jesus answered, said unto him, have faith in God. See, if you keep your faith in God, 
then you will be capable. Then you'll always be capable of being able to change the situation, whether you're in season or out of season. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. I can do all things through the seed of the woman who strengtheneth me. The seed that was sown into your heart should have turned you into a fruitful tree because that seed, according to Peter, is, is incorruptible. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The seed. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. I want to know. I want to know. Why you are not capable. Of overcoming. The temptations. That you face in your life. I want to know. I want you need to. Ask yourself that question. The Bible says examine yourself to see whether or not you're in the faith or not. Because the word of God is received through hearing and hearing by the word of God. The beautiful thing about the fig tree is I had a fig tree in my backyard and, and, and the, the, the figs would beat the leaf to the tree. It, the fig tree is the only tree where the fruit shows up on the tree before the leaves. It used to trip me out because I, I used to want to see that. I, I want to see if this is true. It was true. The figs, the tree would be leafless, but it would be figs on the tree. And then the, when the leaves came, they were so, the, leaf, the fig leaves were so big, I had to lift the leaves up to find the fruit. The figs are taking the house of daylight. And them figs grew overnight too. I would go get a fig off for daylight. She'd be like, was it any more ripe figs out there? I'd be like, no. I'd go back the next day. I'd say, this is crazy. These things is ripening overnight. Which means, and, and I'm going to tell you, Dela, Dela knew, our, Dela knew in our yard, she knew where the hard dirt was, and she, because first she had the fig tree in another spot, and then the I was like, that ain't a good spot for the fig tree. That thing ain't doing that. So we moved it to another spot, and then she said, oh yeah, 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 that's a good spot. That's a good spot. Dila knew the soil. She knew the soil where she had to put that fig tree to get it to produce the figs that she wanted. And man, did that thing produce some figs. So that fig tree that Dela had was a plant that produced seeds that had produced fruit that had seeds in it which is the plant's unit of production capable of developing into another such plant the word of god is sown in us so that we can so that we may develop into the sons of god as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Stop running around professing to be a born-again believer if you are living a life that is corruptible. You should be living an incorruptible life because of the incorruptible seed being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today. Hallelujah. We're going to play my song again. We're going to play it again. Hallelujah. Spirit. We want the spirit. We want the spirit to fall down. We want that seed to be sown into us. We want the seed to enter us. We're all gathered here. We're all gathered here. In your presence, Lord. In your presence, Lord. With our arms. With our arms. Open wide. Open wide. With 
lifted hands. Hallelujah. Here we go. What let us see and the soil and the soil and with all the hearts. We welcome you. We welcome you to abide. So that we can be capable. Hallelujah. We need your Holy Spirit so that we may be capable of being overcomers in this world while men are being defeated by the sea of the serpent. Do nothing. Hallelujah. We are so unworthy. Yes, yes. Because we were born of corruptible seed. So please, 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 please. Hear our prayer and don't let our coming be in that they shall not labor in vain. For they are the seed of the blessing of the Lord and the offspring with them. Yes, Lord. The incorruptible seed of God fall fresh on us. Spirit, Jesus says the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Life is in the seed. Hallelujah. See, see the sower, the sower sows the word which falls down into the soil. The hole that's in the soil is the ear. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God. Come on, incorruptible word. Come on, incorruptible seed. I can't make it without you. Come on, incorruptible seed. So I can talk right, spirit. Come on, incorruptible seed. Come on, incorruptible seed. Incorruptible seed. Producing the same type of plant. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I need you to abide in me. Come on, corruptible. Incorruptible seed. Everything I do. Everything I say. Come on, incorruptible seed. I need you in my home. I need you in my home, incorruptible seed. And even when I'm driving down the dangerous highway, I need you, incorruptible seed.
incorruptible seed. Incorruptible seed. Incorruptible seed. The Spirit of God. The incorruptible seed. The Word that was made flesh. The incorruptible seed. Hallelujah. Fall fresh on me. Hallelujah. The incorruptible seed. The incorruptible seed. Hallelujah. The incorruptible seed. That's all you got to focus on is the incorruptible seed. Let it get in you. Let it live in you. Let it reproduce. Let it develop into another such plant as the other believers that live faithful to God. You can live just as faithful to God as anybody else lived in them 66 books of the Bible. The 39 old books and the 27 new books, 66 books, there is nobody in any of them books that can live any better than you when you allow the incorruptible word of God to produce life on the inside of you. A life that will make you capable of overcoming any and every problem you will face in this world irregardless of what it looks like. You have got, we have got to stop looking and we have got to start believing in the incorruptible seed that has been planted in the hearts of every believer and stop living a defeated life worrying about the cares of this world that are going to choke that word if you don't cut it out. What's going to happen is going to happen. It is the will of God. Whether you want it to happen the way you want it to happen or whether you don't, it is the will of God and it is what he desires to occur in your life so that he can develop you into another such plant as his son, Jesus Christ. God bless you. I love you. Thank you for joining me. I will see you Tuesday night with Pastor King. Then I'll be back here Thursday with another word. Then I'm going to try to not preach until Thursday because I can come and preach that thing tomorrow. God bless you. I love you. Amen and amen.